rear fang venomous snakes are some of the most unique snakes that you could possibly talk about and have in your collection safely. So today we're going to go over the top five rear fang venomous snakes. I'm Adam. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. weeks ago we talked about what rear fang venom is and the different types of snakes and just kind of giving you examples of what you might find in this family of species normally colubrids so I think we're gonna go over the top five the ones that you guys asked about most starting with number five garter snakes now in the back of my mind I knew that garter snakes were rear fang venomous I've studied these guys they're basically the only snake that I could find readily in my neighborhood when I was a kid those are the first snakes I remember but I never really think of them as a rear fang venomous snake. They don't get the hype that the, some of the higher ones in the list do, right? So the interesting thing with garter snakes is they're all over North America. These guys, there's a million different subspecies of them, right? Ribbon, red-sided, checkered, there's a bunch of different ones. In my area, we've got tons and tons of common garter snakes, butler's garter snakes. And it's really interesting that they look so different, but they are the same species of snake. Something else with garter snakes that you might notice that you don't really see with a lot of other colubrids, or at least it's not as common to see on YouTube channels or National Geographic, is the size of the hibernaculums that they go to in the wintertime. Uh, here in Manitoba, we've got a provincial park just dedicated to basically these garter snakes and their giant hibernaculums we're talking about thousands of these snakes that come out during the the spring months so early april mid of april where it's still snow on the ground and you'll see them create these breeding balls right so you'll have a bunch of males and then they're going to go after one female and they're gonna it's the coolest thing there's a whole bunch of different videos about this i really suggest you look at this especially if you've never heard of it before but in captivity because that's what we talk about mostly on this channel I want to talk about why you'd want to keep them. You can cohab them. That's one thing that's very unique. A lot of people will say you shouldn't cohab ball pythons or corn snakes, and I agree with that. But I've never met anyone who knows what they're talking about who would say don't cohab garter snakes. In fact, it's recommended that you can cohab them and you can cohab a bunch of different morphs or different subspecies as well. Do your research on this. Don't take what I just said as a Bible and start tossing garter snakes. Look it up first. These are some of the coolest snakes that you could possibly own, and I'll just get right into it why they're so low on the list. They are illegal in a lot of different areas. There's a lot of areas where if they're, they occur naturally, you cannot keep them because, well, I mean, just easier to separate someone who's keeping them from the wild than keeping them from someone that's captive breeding them. Just, you're not allowed to have them at all, period. And there's a lot of places in Canada like that where I live and places in the states too. But with garter snakes, if you're the, the type of person that doesn't want to feed rodents to an animal, totally understand that it makes a lot of sense. Uh, well, garter snakes are for you. They You can take fish right out of your hands. They'll take fish right out of your hands. There's a bunch of different things that you can feed these guys besides rodents. So if that's something that you're into, maybe a garter snake is the right snake for you. So let's move on to number four. This is one of the most commonly known ones, the mangrove, okay? So the mangrove snake, is something that uh, is a little bit hissy. It's very flamboyant in its colors. It's something that you know is there. And it's very impressive, and that's why a lot of people own these guys. In the wild, you'd find them in Southeast Asia. You'd find them in mangrove swamps, which is where they get their name from. They're technically an arboreal snake or semi-arboreal, depending on what part of the internet you do your research. But one thing that's very notable and no one's gonna refute, these guys can have quite a temper. These guys are known for striking. They're one of the only rear fang venomous snakes that will readily go after you in defense rather than thinking that you're food. So like some of the other ones on the list that we're gonna get to in a minute. They need rather large enclosures and from what I understand, their bite in terms of rear fang venomous snakes is one of the most severe ones that you might encounter. So handle them with caution. Treat them like a venomous snake. Well, maybe not that seriously. You're not going to die if you get bit by one, but it might ruin your day. But here's why you want to own one if you want to own one. They're maybe the most beautiful, non-truly venomous snake that you can get. They get to a rather, rather large size. You can find them six feet all day long, and they're, they need a really cool enclosure, right? Because it's kind of arboreal. You need a little bit of height, so there's a ton of room for you to make something that is appealing without a snake even being inside of it. Uh, for a home, for a mangrove snake. And, uh, I mean, look, look at the colors. Look at this thing. 
And it's not necessarily just the black and yellow that you see here. There's different types and different colorations of mangrove snakes, but no matter which one you get, there is a, a you're gonna have a hard time finding a drab looking mangrove snake, and that's why they're on the list. And with that, let's move on to number three, false water cobras. And this is something that everybody, well, a lot of people on the channel are asking about in the comment section. Do a video about false water cobras. False water cobras are awesome. Talk about them. Well, the truth is, I don't know a ton about these guys, but I've done a lot of research, and what I found is they're really cool and really underappreciated. And I think that they're not kept very often because they're hard to find. Now, I only go to reptile expos in the Toronto area, so it's I'm kind of I have a biased opinion on this, but I don't ever really see these guys at all. I can find more egg egg eating snakes than I can false water cobras. So I think that that might be why they're so underappreciated is that they're very hard to find. These guys are from southern South America and they are called a false water cobra because they can kind of hood up like a true cobra. Here is why that's so interesting to me because in nature a lot of the times you'll see snakes or any animal try to mimic another animal which is actually dangerous when they aren't and that makes sense but here's the thing false water cobras are from the new world they're from south america all cobras are from the old world usually asia and africa so why it's doing this i have no idea but that's there's another snake on the list too that kind of does this but it's, I don't know why that is. I think that'd be something to um, put in the comment section below if you know the answer, because I truly am fascinated why you'd want to mimic something that doesn't even occur on your continent. Unlike python species, a lot of different snakes uh, where the female is larger than the male, false water cobras, the male gets larger than the female, up to right around six feet. They're, they can get a little bit bigger, so you're gonna need a bigger enclosure. 75 gallon at very, very minimum. I would rather see you have like 150 gallons, something like that. After all, it is a six foot snake. It's not super big around, but I mean, it still looks like a colubrid, but it's not tiny. It's not a ribbon snake, for example, or a vine snake. So give it some room. These guys will eat rats very steadily for you, no problem whatsoever. Um, overall, it's a great snake to have. They're very timid to, to bite. They wouldn't bite you as readily as a mangrove snake would, for example. But overall, they're very tameable and one of the rear fang venomous snakes that a lot of people feel no qualms about handling whatsoever. False water cobras, absolutely amazing. All right, number two, another new world snake, Baron's Racers. This is one that came up in the comment section a lot in the video that you can watch right here, all about rear fang venomous snakes. And I didn't really know much about them. Like I know here in Southern Ontario, we've got blue racers. So I figure, ah, they're probably the same thing. They're not at all. Baron's racers, they come in a bunch of different colors. Green mostly, you can find blues, browns, stuff like that. But they have a more vibrant color. Uh, they hang out in the trees quite a bit as well. They're a little bit more slender than some of the other snakes that we talked about but they can get quite long as well. In Western South America, where you find these guys, they are an arboreal species, and something that a lot of people comment on who've had these guys or study them out in the field is they've got a very unique movement. Now, I've got no footage to show you of barren racers moving. I suggest Googling it because it is very interesting to show, um, but also they just have a unique shape and their face looks unique and the markings. Uh, I just think that these guys are very cool, also underappreciated, but I've literally never seen one of these guys on a table at an expo. My local shop doesn't have one of these. I don't know anyone personally who has one of these in their collection. So something that's a little bit more rare, but talking to a few people who own them, especially ones that commented on the video and I struck up a conversation with about this snake I knew almost nothing about. One thing they all mentioned was they're pretty easy to tame down and handle. They're fast. Uh, it's a six foot colubra that it moves quickly. So that's maybe a little bit, um, cumbersome for newer uh, snake handlers, but they're not going to bite you as readily as a mangrove snake again or something else like that. So this might be better for someone who wants a thinner bodied snake, uh, but doesn't mind something that's going to move really fast. If you want a rear fang version of a longer corn snake, well, maybe a Baron's Racer might be right for you. And number one, and if you watch the channel, you probably already know which one I'm going to choose, a hognose snake. Well, there's a bunch of different ones, right? I've only got Westerns in my collection, but Eastern hognose snakes, they're also rear fang venomous, um, giant Madagascar hognose snakes, Mexican hognose snakes, tricolor hognose snakes. I love them all. I've only got Westerns in my collection. Easterns are illegal to own here. Tricolors are hard to find, yada, yada. Here's why they're awesome. Well, you could look at them, first of all. That'll tell you something. They got these 
pug noses that I don't know of any other snake that truly has this pug looking, you know, kind of shovel face type thing going on with it. And also they hood up like a false water cobra and they hiss at you and they'll strike at you with a, you know, this closed mouth, which is something very unique. I've never had another snake just kind of smack their face into me as their defense mechanism, right? But especially with Easterns, if you really tick them off and they start getting kind of scared and you're not falling for that I'm bigger than I actually am, fear me, I'm a cobra type thing, they will just play dead, which is hilarious. It's a big bad snake who will hiss at you and act all tough and then after a while I'll just be like, all right, I give up, bro. You can tickle my belly or something, you know? So I think these guys are great and they come in a million different morphs, especially Westerns. We'll talk about Westerns for the remainder of this uh, short segment here. Albinos are really common, um, anaconda morphs, you can get them uh, supercondas, which is an anaconda to an anaconda. There's a million different morphs that you can have with these guys and more coming every day. Um, pink pastels and you, there's a bunch of different types of albinos and now watermelons and anyway, these guys are awesome. I've got several in my collection. I produced my first clutch of hognose snakes this year. I plan to do it again next year. I love working with them because they don't get super big. I mean, a three foot snake is pretty darn big. And in terms of weight, uh, you wanna get them up to about 300 grams as a female before you breed them. Some people say 250. So they can get all the way up to 800 if like they're gigantic, but a 500 gram individual, that is a giant female hognose snake. In males, they only need to be about 35 to 55 grams before you breed them. They're tiny. It looks hilarious when you put a breeding pair together because the male is so much smaller than the female. These guys are very tameable. A lot of people handle them like they're a corn snake, like there's no danger to them whatsoever. And for the most part, there's really not any danger to you. Some people will have a reaction, right? If I get stung by a bee, nothing happens. If someone who is allergic gets stung, to, gets stung by a bee, you're gonna have a bad day, right? So it depends on who you are and how your reaction to uh, the proteins in their saliva, which some people would call a mild venom, uh, it depends on your react, right? But with these guys, they're very easy to tame down. Like I mentioned before, they're not apt to bite you unless they think that you're food. But if they do latch onto you, just like all the other ones we talked about today, get them off as quick as possible. Don't let them chew in that venom uh, into you or toxic saliva, whatever. And something I want to correct from the last video I did, these guys don't have groove teeth. They've got smooth teeth. This is something that I, I messed up, but either way, they're going to do the same thing, gnaw that venom or toxic saliva into you. Don't let them do that. So there you go. Those are, in my opinion, the five coolest rear fang venomous snakes that you can keep in the hobby. Is there something I forgot? Should I have added something to something that I said not belong in the list? Put it in the comment section below. If you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button there. And of course, because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.